The new Rattel RT950 Pro and the Rattel RT880 compete in many positive ways. So let's compare them and see how they stand up to my tests. So let's get to it. The triple VFO is their common feature. However, the display is finer with a nicer font on the RT950 Pro. The RT950 Pro has a real tuning knob on top, which is unfortunately missing in the RT880, where a secondary antenna input for HF is located in its place. The quality of the keyboard is almost the same in both cases, except for the navigational keys and the VFO switch that is missing in the RT880. The new RT950 Pro has one more programming button on the side, which is of course a positive and practical feature. Battery with 2400 mAh in the RT880 and 2600 mAh capacity in the RT950 Pro are in my opinion quite weak for 10 watt radios. Quite unconventionally the RT950 has the antenna on the right side and the RT880 has it on the left. You may have to consider which location is more comfortable for you depending on whether you are right-handed or left-handed. Finally, in my opinion, the biggest advantage of the RT950 Pro is the common antenna input for VHF, UHF and HF instead of two in the RT880. Unfortunately, older RT950 Pros manufactured before the second half of September 2025 are deaf on middle waves and long waves. Therefore, the RT880 has better reception on lower frequencies. The charging USB-C port is built into the radio on the side of the RT880 and in the case of the RT950 Pro, charging is in the battery, which allows us to charge the battery separately outside the radio, which is an advantage if you also have a spare battery and can charge multiple batteries at the same time. Let's measure the basic parameters of both radios, namely their output RF power, parasitic emissions, or compare the sensitivity of both receivers and the sensitivity of the noise suppressor, or the so-called squelch. As usual, I will use my Suricom Power and SWR meter connected to a 100 watt dummy load. 8.6 watts in the RT880 and 9.6 watts in the RT950 Pro are in the VHF band. And 9.4 watts in the RT880 and up to 11.4 watts in the RT950 Pro are in the UHF band. The spurious emissions test showed us that the RT880 has a cleaner signal in the VHF band without harmonic signals which are numerously visible in the RT950 Pro. And in the UHF band, the RT880 also shows a slightly cleaner signal compared to the RT950 Pro, where we see one extra spike. In the CB band, this has changed and here we can already see significantly better suppression of harmonic signals in the RT950 Pro, which are below minus 40 dB compared to the RT880. For the SWR test of the original antenna, I placed it in the middle of the room on a tripod. The SWR in the UHF band is 1.9 to 2.5 and on the VHF band between 5.5 and 3.5 which is quite high but since the radios are held in the hand I touched the analyzer and on the VHF the SWR visibly dropped to values below 2 in the entire band while on the UHF I do not see a visible difference. 
And now let's compare the receiver sensitivity between the RT-A80 and the RT-950 Pro. Just to clarify, the higher the level number with the minus, the weaker the signal. And we are monitoring the lowest value at which the receiver can still demodulate the signal. The lower, the better. RTA80 on VHF is minus 115 dBm, which is the lowest limit of the generator. And uh, next is the RT950 Pro on VHF. Here at minus 115 dBm the signal is not detectable. It is heard at minus 105 dBm, which is a little worse than the RT880. And again, the RT-880, but now on the UHF band. As you can see here too, the signal from the generator is very well readable at the lowest value of minus 115 dBm. So what about the RT-950 Pro? Here we see a slight improvement because the signal from the generator can be read even at value of minus 115 dBm. Unfortunately, even here on UHF, the RT880 still has a slight advantage. Knowing the signal sensitivity is also important because it shows us at uh, what weak signal the radio will still leave the noise gate open for us, so we can still hear the signal. So let's start on VHF with the RTA80 squelch level 1. And here we can see that the signal level required to open the squelch is on minus 114 dBm. And now the RT950 Pro on the VHF band, also squelch level 1. Here we can see that the noise gate closes at the signal of minus 105 dBm, which is about 10 dBm more than on the RT880. This means that on the RT950 we will no longer hear the same weak signal as was still audible in the RT880. Now the same test but in the UHF band. Here we see that the RTA80 again has no problem opening the squelch at the lowest value of 115 dBm. In the case of the RT950 Pro, the squelch closes at the value of 111 dBm in the UHF band, which is only slightly worse than on the Ratto RTA80. Uh, finally, let's also look at the uh, HF receiver in both radios. We will start in the 20 meter band at the frequency of 14.2 MHz. In the case of the RTA80, the signal is still audible at minus 87 dBm. And what about the RT950 Pro? Here at the RT950 Pro receiver significantly outperforms the RTA80, as the signal can be detected at minus 115 dBm, which significantly exceeds the sensitivity of the RT880 on short waves. Well, and here it is a bit of a problem. Rattel announced that the entire batch of RT950 Pro radios manufactured before mid-September 25 have poor sensitivity on long waves and middle waves 
because they focused on the best possible reception on short waves, which is ultimately true. The RT880 on middle waves still detects a signal at minus 85.5 dBm, where the RT950 Pro is minus 15 dBm less at 70.5 dBm. On long waves it is the same. In the RT880 it is at the level of minus 83.5 dBm and in the RT950 Pro up to minus 59 dBm which is almost minus 25 dBm less than the RT880 which is quite bad. But I also have a good news. Rattle announced that the all RT950 Pro manufactured since the second half of September 25 are already upgraded to receive long and medium waves, perhaps at the cost of a slight deterioration in short wave reception. Thanks for watching 73.